Sanbarani, hello. Welcome back again. Welcome back to a new week. Welcome back to a new the exciting episode. This is well to your boy. Back on the podcast, back on the channel with another exciting new week of it. There's a lot, a lot of games happening, a lot of interesting games happening this week. DSTV Premiership is back. Uh yeah, it's got to the international break. Um, it's been uh, a bit dry. At the same time, at the same time, what's interesting this week is that the um, uh, transfer deadline is actually closing on the twenty second. So a lot of DSTV Premiership uh, teams are finalizing a few, uh, I don't know, recruits, players, and all these things. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we go any further, please, uh, once more, as per normal, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and don't forget to click on that notification bell. And keep sharing it on your socials. Uh, it helps the algorithm to push this video to people like yourself who enjoy uh, local football content. Uh, this is your Ual tell your boy again, uh, just to make sure uh, we ticked all the boxes. Um, yeah, so I won't talk about the first uh, round of matches that have already happened um, from last week. Uh, you'll check the previous video because that's something we already had covered. But in terms of the results themselves, um, Sundowns uh, were in CAF competition. They won 4-0 against a Tanzanian, ah, a Burundian team. Uh, I think I actually covered that video. Uh, Pirates lost against the Joanin Galaxy in Botswana. And the Kaiser Chiefs actually drew against the Royal AM. Um, that's, that's how, we, uh, you know, uh, the three big teams kicked it off. So, not much complaints from there. Pirates, we should have expected better, but they had a, a different team. They have a different team, to be fair. Uh, so uh, that that's something, uh, I guess, maybe they're resting players for, for, for the match for tomorrow against the Sundowns. So uh, they couldn't get the results. Uh, they actually could have lost about like 2 nil, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, they were actually quite lucky. To come off with one, but remember, that's that's the first leg. So there's still a second leg. So each one in Kalex still has to go to a Orlando. So they'll be looking. I, I'm guessing they will come with a stronger team, and they need to turn things around. So even if they get a one goal, that now becomes because they don't have an away goal. So the aggregate maybe can help them, or if they can just win by two one, they through because um, they now eh, they're in the brink of actually being knocked out of the so they can go to Confederation Cups if they're not careful. Sometimes really already uh, they're guaranteed to go through to the group stages of ECAP. Uh, so it has achieved actually top points uh, in the DSTV Premiership because if they had won that game, uh, to their credit, they would have been on third on the log because they play against the Super Sport. You see, so this is where planning becomes important because while your counterparts, because Sukukune, Supersport, Nabo, they are busy, they go careful. So it helps to get maximum points now because the number of games that they've played are less than what you have. So they're in a good position. They're in fourth place now, but it's not the true reflection of the log because some of uh, other teams have to really catch up because already Supersport games has already been um, postponed. So Kukuna Nangate has played less games. So with eight points out of six games, that's not enough. And that game alone would have taken them to 10. It would have put pressure on the next game that they're going into, which is against the Supersport, which they've been traveling. They would have had an advantage. Um, a lot of missed chances. I think sometimes uh, to talk about the Chiefs Gangane before we go into um, the, 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 uh, the next fixtures is the fact that um, you know, I know they knew uh, because we had U Gonzalez as a new, because uh, fairly so, uh, most of the attacking midfielders are new, but man, the chances they were missing, uh, that's now what you can decide for yourself to, to really think uh, margins. So those are the kind of things that these teams, your Pirates or Sundowns, are past that, that uh that time where they would actually miss golden chances like that. And maybe that's the the level of depth and quality or the difference sometimes why you see certain teams are thriving in this way because they 
uh, are already, they've gone through a different level and actually the quality that they are bringing in, uh, it's able to give them the results that they actually need. So uh, that's the difference sometimes um, in terms of quality, I feel. I'm not saying Chiefs are not quality, but when you have players who are, are still in a position to miss golden chances like that, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, Dupree like, got, got four or five chances, I believe. Umo, deny. They were just, they don't look sharp, you know. And you think you guys have gotten two weeks to train together. You would think you are hungry to play football again. But what I've saw, uh, I saw on my side, they were too rushed. Like there was too much. They were not, they were so impatient uh, at a game where it was in their hands. And sometimes it wasn't as clean as you would like. Uh, at least the midfield have got it right. I think I was, it was beautiful to see Umatlo being given a confidence, starting lineup by Alexis O um, Tanzani. So, um, you know, when you look at the lineups, it, it gives us a window on what to expect uh, uh, tomorrow. So it, it opens up the conversation. But before we go there, I want to talk about the the rumors circulating at the moment. Um, Tetua, uh, Luke Fliers, and uh, Lucas Tinsorina from Sundowns. With Pirates, it seems like they've closed the book there because uh, we did see Upaloni for the first time playing La Pogucho and Incalix. So uh, that's, that's been Kumatita uh, Street everywhere. Um, Tetua, or the CEO of the Stellan Porsche, has actually confirmed that Kaiser Chief did table an offer, but it's not only Kaiser Chief. I think the Pirates are going to in the mix. Um, no, Kanyiso Mayo. Kanyiso Mayo is just a rumor. I'm not exactly sure if they are prioritizing him this season or they're prioritizing for next season. But judging by his performances, but there's just rumors again. Uh, both parties haven't really officially confirmed anything. Uh, but there's been speculation that it's possible that Sundowns has actually tabled an offer there. At the moment, the value okay, it's around, I think it's around 20, 20 million rands, if I'm not mistaken. For me, I don't think they need them. This season, I don't think they need them. It will be an unnecessary signing. But, hey, this transfer deadline is going to give us, because if all Friday, this week alone, it's going to be turning heads. Ooh, Kirsten as well at Sundowns. Uh, apparently, they are uh, um, they, 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 they're looking to part ways because his contract still is valid until next year, June 2025, if I'm not mistaken. And... Now, with that in mind, you're thinking, what is it because maybe, because remember, Rolani had mentioned that he just has one signing in the striking department. He, so, um, that's something, and you know, sometimes I, I saw, keep in mind. So, it's possible that they also are looking to add Unkai uh, Sumayo to the fold. So, that's, that's something I wanted to uh, also talk about, um, which is something that um, we can look at four. Oh, and it makes sense. Now I'm just stirring the pot because remember, Usere Inutko number 10. Mayoko number 10, kept on seat. If they do manage to land his signing this season, meaning number 10, I should have long So, I mean, I don't know, but I don't think they need him. They've already signed a lot of players. They already do have a lot of quality players. Hey, Ukai Somai coming in just will tell you because now they have to sacrifice their own players. Like Abone Yomayem already are seeing less game time. So, Spelelo uh, Mkulisi, we have Abu Pako Nasir. Yeah. So, if I'm jumping from one uh, context, uh, one context to the next, it's just, no, let's just talk about the transfers and signs before we talked about the game itself. So, yeah. That's that's uh, what Sundowns is trying to wrap up, and what that's what we've heard so far. Uh, like I said, the Pirates we can include it with a signing Ram Teta, which now nah, it's an unnecessary one because go that CDM position they already have like three or, uh, three or four players. Uh, we've seen they've released Uben and Suarez is going to a Amazulu, uh, so uh, probably Paloni because he's young. I want to give him a chance. Because uh, they already have Umnare, uh, Utim, Upaloni. So they have like four. I was like, who knows four? Who knows four? But I'm going to say, who knows four? So, Pirates, I think they've closed the checkbook. 
So the Chiefs is the only one that um, we, we, we left it until Friday. So when the Chiefs have released Nabo, um, apparently, the Diliabo Nabo still in Bosch. Uh, they could offer Umashian as, as a package deal, uh, which, if that's the case, I, uh, like, like let him thrive. In terms of any chance, you know, in terms of game time, it's still in push. So those are the proposed deals that I have heard of. What other deal? These these guys are trying to finalize from their side. So yeah, Kastin, Kastin is the interesting one because now Kastin has also been linked with the Kaiser Chiefs. So Kaiser Chiefs. Um, God willing, Gaston, Luke Flears. Oh, yes, yeah, Luke Flears. Um, Luke Flears. Now, this is the interesting thing about Luke Flears, and this is I, I want you to guys understand that sometimes where they smoke this fight. Now, Okaiza Jr., Okaiza Mtang Jr., has alluded to the fact that they, they if you've seen now, which Kaiser Chiefs has been buying players abroad because apparently. The STV Premiership teams don't want to do business with Kaiser Chiefs. Now, that has been said before because Gubangati is Kaiser Chiefs. Because Kaiser Chiefs have always said, whenever we try to buy a player, Sazuti Price is King Aga, then whenever Kaiser Chiefs comes to inquire, the player's price triples, doubles sometimes. We don't know why. Sharp. Now, those are the, the tactics some teams use. For example, whenever we play Cape Town City, Tamachiki Tuavo, Usually, if they play against any other TSTV Premiership, it becomes a number pass like Titera. When they play Kaiser Chiefs, it becomes 100 bucks. Apparently, that's an A-class game. Now, they do the same thing with players. These are the teams, not only just one team. So, that has been the rumor uh, to say, which, why have other deals failed when it comes to Kaiser Chiefs? Do they do want to pay? Or is what he's saying true or not? Which, for me, as a fan... You would think, ah, maybe they're giving us excuses. But in the past, we've seen um, teams do certain things that kind of tells us maybe there is truth in what they say. Now, for example, Luke Flair's last year, before we bought to the clock, there was chatter that actually the Kaiser Chiefs did inquire about him. Then what did Supersport do? They extended his contract, right? Now... A year later, they have actually released him. And now, we are assessing him. He's actually training at the children at the moment. Now we're killing him for free. Make that make sense. You almost killed the player's career because Kaiser Chiefs at the team at the time was looking for him. This is the time where we actually didn't uh, want to sign the club. But we look flares. And Masangu already, I think he was in plan. Before even... Take it came to, uh, uh, probably was in the picture. Now, back to my point. Is what you're not saying true or not? Because if that's the case, that it shows that so these teams, they know that they don't want Ikaiza Chiefs to be a successful club as before. They'd rather sell to other teams like our oh, Sundowns and your rival teams instead of Ikaiza Chiefs. Why? That's the question. That's the big question for me. Why? So I'll leave it up to you guys to, to decide for yourself because um, where they smoke this fire, because now uh, they've actually gone for him and it's not really about us chasing for my free agents. I don't think now that's the case. It's just that if he's available and we had inquired about him before, why not? And it's like it did say that he's looking for to sign another extra defender before the, the transfer window closes. So... Uh, it's easy to, you know, when luck favors you, you just have to capitalize, I guess. So that's the, and they haven't signed him, so they still, they're assessing him, apparently. So maybe uh, that's another deal that can fall through. So, Gustin, Luke Flears, and also Um Ted. You know, he, 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 you know, social media lies to sign for a Kaza Chief. So, uh, we wait on that issue. But for me, if it doesn't work out, it's fine. Uh, I don't think... Of course, that is isn't because this is the third time they would have tried to sign him Teto. So, uh, for me, man, I know it's okay. So, those are the kind of transfers I wanted to discuss um, before we talk about... Now, tomorrow's fixtures are very interesting. Um, we have a super sport against Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, okay, before we go there, um, look, don't forget, again, I need to remind you guys to like, subscribe, 
And also, also don't forget to click on that notification bell because it helps the algorithm to push this video to more people who are interested in the same content as you guys. Super Sport versus Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, Mamiruti Santan versus the Pirates. Very, very, very interesting. I'll tell you why. Sterling is Super Sport ne Kaiser Chiefs. Now, Kaiser Chiefs are in fourth place at the moment. Super Sport is in third place. Um, they have played less games than us. But I think the last two years or so, Super Sport has been a thorn in Kaiser Chiefs' heel. Because obviously Kevin Hunt has always had a grudge of some sort. But they've looked okay in last season, ever since Kevin Hunt came back. So um, with how Kaiser Chiefs is playing now, they haven't lost a game in four games. Uh, and the Super Sport now, you, um, you know, being in third place, it's it's interesting in terms of our philosophy. Because you 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 are thinking to yourself, how is Kazuchi is going to apply themselves? Because at times you know the transition, the loop block, against uh, well, AM, they're actually playing. They were a ball playing team, you know. They were actually combining, um, not many turnovers, ball position concentrated. Thing is, this is the problem when they are missing so many chances. So. Super Sport doesn't need an invitation. We know the Alamalong ball crosses and their midfield is quite interesting because they basically each other last time because Umakhamani and Nongjong, they've been really, really tuning in very nicely. And there's a former player there, Unang, and Nusiana Kulu. So probably we'll, we'll be able to see them play against the, their former team. So those uh, that play that 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 that, that game is, uh, is also important for three points. Because we're not sitting comfortably, yeah? because uh, today there's a couple of games playing. So should any of those teams win? Because now it's very early. It's unfortunate that any teams that wins, the, the log keeps going up and down. So there's not much of a gap uh, that has been established as yet. So to gather enough points very early on is going to be important. The uh, thing is, with the kind of cheese blowing hot and cold, the performances, the results at least are consistent where they don't concede as much. But the performances, it's going to depend on, are they going to keep the same lineup or are we going to see Tanzania coming back? Uh, which I don't think it's um, it's a good option. So for me, I think they can tweak where Upo Tsane can come back for first half. Then Barre uh, stay with the pre because last game, Uyumuntu, Ngati looked... A bit fatigued, maybe, because I missed my chance over here. So, um, Super Sport Day, we know it's going to be playing around KZ Chiefs. I think for me, it's going to be playing a transition. Uh, that's what I'm that, that's my pick. Uh, they if I have to give you a prediction, I'll go with the KZ Chiefs 2 nil. The first 20 minutes is going to be important. How do, I'll just look at them if how they play in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I would say that will set the tone for the game because in reality, um, Simang Nuri Clock is very good and solid at the back. So it's going to be interesting how they're going to crack them because that's the only goal potential I see is Super Sport trying to, 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 to score by. I must say peace uh, and also aerial balls. But apart from that, I don't see them coming in from the, from the inside. So, yeah. Sundowns, Pirates, game. Yo, that's a big one. Six games, no losses. The Pirates still lose a one. And that one, head to head, has always been interesting. The last maybe couple of years, Pirates has not won a game. Cup competitions and all. They're playing good. If you went back to my uh, videos, I did mention that for me, I feel like it's 60 70. Between 70 and 80, no, 80% is too much. 60 to 70% are ready for his sometimes. Now, it'll prove my point tomorrow. Why? They've been playing good. Mara is sometimes is exceptional because um, they've got the quality to match any team in the world, I feel. And they're the best in Africa at the moment. So, Iparit is going to be a very, very big test for them. For me, in terms of Philog, it would be good for a draw. But knowing he sometimes very stubborn when it comes to the league. Uh, Abu Ribeiro, they can't stop scoring. Uh, so yeah, I don't see that game being a goalless draw. Uh, Sundown's problem is uh, 
the way parents are along, I mean, I'm interested to know how are they going to feel when they don't have too much of the ball and how is Santos going to feel when they don't have too much of the ball because it, it, seemingly they play similar way they like to have more touches on the ball than the other team so that's going to be a clash of, of, of philosophies right there but I think what will prevail is who wants it more on the day and this Bonita Mosanga has been exceptional so it, 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 it's keen interest the way Abuzwani they've been doing it for years but now I think the emergence of these young players, maybe that could be the impetus. I won't forget. Ripas, apparently, Ulibusa has his number. So, um, for them, I'll give it a 1-0. Whoever takes their chances well. But I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game because it's going to be very tactical. It's going to be close. They want to be reading each other for the first 20 minutes. So, when they pull out, there's all going to be probably a lot of turnovers, I believe, because they're going to be careful not to make any mistakes. The issue that I have is Iparet at the back, they're very, very leaking there. Um, sometimes doesn't concede too much. So um, it, it, it's it's going to be very tight. Tight, tight, tight. But I don't think it's going to be a goalless draw. I think it was a and Jelly one that's going to numb the pain of the other game or the other team. So um, where it's going, my heart is with pirates, but but we all know Sundowns is is just too too strong, man. But um, look, we'll leave it to the football gods. Um, I'll leave it there as well for my side uh, for this week. Thank you guys. Um, if you've managed to watch this with us uh, until this far, I'll see you on the next episode when we discuss the results. We discuss what's happening, and hopefully, who knows? Maybe these signings would have been confirmed. And let's see. Um, yeah, so thank you so much and see you in the next episode. Thank you.